side. Did Did you tell them about our trip? What about Venice? Yeah. You You give your version. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's already told, told the story. Give I got opinion. on him. Hey, I loved it. Look, I got on him about forgetting them chickens, yeah. and all he did oh. was the key Robertson deflection. deflection. He started oh, telling no. uh, he started yeah. telling me no, he didn't even do that. He just started telling me about feet, hand feeding alligators. That's right. Oh, he yeah. didn't even was, acknowledge yeah. the fact that alligators. he had forgot uh, chickens. I will say this: I was a bit nervous when I looked. Oh, well, we had about ten or twelve gators around. There was five of them. Was, <laughs> I more than that. Y'all, had a had a had a fish carcass and he was slapping the water with it and no, you never would have known a 10 foot gator was right there gator. under it i'm talking about on the bank yeah and he was yeah. slapping that water and those eyes popped up <laughs> and that thing come out of that water <laughs> oh i got some footage of it oh it's man. pretty impressive and then but then i look behind behind him and there's four other ones coming out the other well, there's pond. a pond full up boys i'm telling you so we're surrounded it was impressive <laughs> he wasn't nervous though yeah. he kept Tom kept grabbing my leg and i said hey <laughs> what i'm scared of is right over there i ain't worried about what's behind me <laughs> yeah i ain't worried about what you grabbing my leg i said i see what i'm scared of right over there <laughs> yeah 11 foot gator uh, you talking about a beautiful place on planet earth you know if the old lady ever decides to run off that's where that's where you'll yeah. find me. <laughs> Miss Stone fixed to move to Venice, boys. <laughs> well, I'm I'll miss y'all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm serious. He gone. Uh, I don't think uh, Stone's going with you. So we stood up on the front of the boat, and Captain Josh, put, he pulled up. He said, all right, boys, cast that way. And we were catching four-pound speckled trout on every cast. I mean, pretty ones, too. And, I mean, I've never caught, got into the big ones like yeah. that. I was having a big time. And then so I said, all right, let's go somewhere else, try to catch some redfish. Well, fish. I want some redfish, okay? They fight better. I said, we ca- we're we literally catching a four-pound speckled trout. On but I did you a favor. Cat. You had to clean all the fish. Well, that that is true. <laughs> you can throw them back. Uh, you no, can throw them back. No. no so I don't throw <laughs> no, nothing back. Ain't nothing, ain't, <laughs> no. ain't nothing saying then we you got to keep Look, then we come home with, with uh, about 16-inch shrimp, uh, oysters, and filet speckled trout and then the big fish fry and uh, seafood, seafood i had two night. two 65 yetis yeah slam oh. full of shrimp and some of the old terry's oysters down there you ever what, had some of them you know what they didn't have they didn't have no chicken no chicken, no chicken. They didn't have no chicken <laughs> no chicken boys no stuffed one. chicken uh, not a one <laughs> That's all Martin asked me about. Where's the chicken? Yeah, where's that chicken? Where's that chicken? I did. I got everything. I did forget the chicken. We got everything, but that's right. But the chicken. But the chicken. I have to be honest with you. That was partly my fault too. I forgot all about the chicken. (laughs) See, that's what Stone does. He just owns up to it. But that's that's acknowledgement. That's not. Hey, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story about this alligator. <laughs> no, no. He's got too much on his mind, boy. <laughs> now he's blaming Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving the rig. Oh, but it, it was a fun trip. We had, as always, had us a blast. And uh, the weather was nice. Those old no seams. And, and I up. asked Martin a question when I got back. Okay, oh. how did this moon and the, and the tides coming in and out, how did that work? And then he we discussed flat gravity. Earth. <laughs> Welcome to the duck car About the gravitational pull of the moon. Yeah. He's just <laughs> pulling them away from the Earth or toward the Earth, whatever it is. That so moon's about. big, and it's got gravity. Yeah. That is all you need to know. Yeah. It pulls right. and it pulls and pushes. Hey. When, well, it, hey, to when the it, tune, it pulls. Hey, to the tune of about three miles an hour. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, it can be I stronger than that. I in and out down there. It was cool. It can be stronger than that. Yeah. But Josh's backyard is gravel, and then when the tide come in, I'm looking at soft shell crabs all over the place, over the gravel. Them's good too. Oh yeah, they're edible. You can eat them, and you can eat all of it. They're edible. <laughs> oh no, I, you know, I didn't. I didn't. I told you know we've got some somewhere. I think Florida Keys the guy gave us a bunch of them. And Stone said, "I said I don't want them. I said I don't like crab." Stone said, "Hey." Hold it. Yeah, yeah. we want them. He don't, he don't yeah. speak for us. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, he said, hold it. We'll get it. So when he come back, he cooked them, and I said, well, maybe these are different. Let me try. <laughs> yeah. And then it was. Claws <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, and all. They are fine. It. All of it. Lord. There's yeah. not many things better. Yeah, it was fine. I was just shocked. Fred I like them. 
soft shell crab. I had the what crispy. the king crab, I think what it is. The big old big old long things. I'm talking about yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. Deadly I tried cat. them and them Giant. them had a, a real strong taste to them. I fishy taste. Right. Yeah, fishy taste. Yeah. Well, that's what happens whenever you don't eat it straight from the source. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, well, I got hey. the general rule about seafood. Well, hey, if it wasn't brought to me from down there, I need to smell salt water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fresh, fresh than that. Yeah, fresh is better. It. Okay, because I didn't care for the king crab. Like, it there's was, a few was, places that fly that stuff in pretty quick, and it's yeah. it's done well. But like, it's so it, in, in the end, I'm not going to Iowa to eat sushi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. not which nope. which baffles me about that sushi place in Spring, Springfield. That's Springfield, why, but they fly that stuff in every day. And that's why you pay a premium, and it's oh. good. It's oh. solid. You got to get it from but, the ocean. Fresh. Yeah. Fresh, boys. They fly it in that quick. Yeah, so, I mean, there are anomalies. But oh, in the oh that, that that when we come, hey, they literally got it that night and that morning. It was right oh, off yeah. the boat. I, I, mm-hmm. the guy I'm talking about literally off the boat. The, the, yeah. uh, Tying up his ropes like yeah. he just yeah. come back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, he, he, stepped, in. he literally took one step with his Cajun Reeboks and handed me the bag. Yeah, Cajun Reeboks. Yeah. And uh, shrimp season just come in too, oh. so we got the and it was tick ridiculous. Take of, of the litter. He was talking about. Oh, it was just ridiculous. Shrimp everywhere. Shrimp everywhere. Yeah. I'm headed shrimp south by the billions. I've been eating shrimp for. Hey, when do yeah. we get back? How's that long? <laughs> hey, I don't know. I've been eating shrimp and fish oh. ever since. Well, hey, I enjoyed them the other night. I got four little fillets left. That's the problem with the newfound pregnancy world is they put restrictions on how much of that seafood and fish and medium medium rare ribeyes and all that stuff that they eat. Yeah, it'll make you get eaten. The Martin House, we chicken eaters right now. I mean, my mom says she doesn't believe in any of that because look how great I turned out. I agree. (laughs) I agree, but on the off chance. You know. They said you can't eat fish from the Washita River. At, they, they'll tell you that. Like well, that. they should have been more specific. Bass. Uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Martin, but uh, the bass is the one you got to watch out for with the mercury. Well, crappie too. All the game fish. If you eat smaller fish, you don't. You got to watch how much you you eat it in. Your hair will fall out. No, never mind. But that's just. Well, me. I got plenty of hair. My <laughs> mom says she ate it every day while she was pregnant. But that's me. the problem with our river. You can still go catch them out of a pond and cut their sides off. That's what we do. And we just, I, I go to a pond, knock the sides off about eight or ten, and that's what when we eat fish, that's what we eat oh, instead boy. of rivers and all that stuff right now. But I look, I've ate river fish my whole life. The only thing I can tell you is I weigh about two sixty five, and I ain't got no hair on top of my head. If both them side effects got something to do with it, well, then I'll hey, live. There you go, boy. <laughs> like, I'm cool. Uh, it don't matter. Good. Yeah, I saw Jace yesterday sneaking over to Willie's pond, going to catch a crab. Oh, yeah. I was like, "Hey, yeah. man, you live on a pond." I didn't say anything, yeah. but I was, I was eyeballing him. Yeah. So yeah what you... did he say last time? Man, them crappies made a comeback. I said, "Yeah, we stocked it last fall." Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that's what he told yeah, me. We, yeah. yeah, we he paid him. Right. I thought them crappies supposed to be sterile. I'm like, no. Uh, well, he just restocked them because yeah, you caught them all. Because you <laughs> caught them. They are, but we put a thousand more fingerlings yeah, in there and said, let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's it, funny. And then the owner can't even go out there and catch one. Well, that's a personal problem, too. Well, yeah. Zing. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty easy. They the same trick. They done the same thing. Especially if you got some minners. Yeah. Oh, uh, Willie goes down there with worms and a cane pole. <laughs> that's Willie's t- style of fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. Hey, hey it works for everybody. Right. Oh yeah. You know what honey hole sells? Worms, cane poles. Mm-hmm. Lots <laughs> hey. of them, baby. That's how it started, boys. That's right. Yeah. Worms. Stick, stick and, and string. Yeah. Stick and string. Blue worm. Boom. No, that's a good time. When that first batch of fresh shrimp come in, I took that <clears throat> that shrimp, butterflied him, deveined him, took a little smear. Cream cheese. Sure. Okay. A little smear of cream cheese. Smear of Took cream a little, cheese. Uh, half of a piece of thin bacon. Thin Se- bacon. Season him up with the seasoning of your choice. Wrap oh, him in that bacon. Good too. Put a, sl- a sliver of onion Ooh. in there with that Ooh. cream cheese. Wrap that bacon around him and then top it off right at the end. This is on the grill mm. with a little bit of Mike's hot, hot honey. honey. I knew where that was going. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> it is I'm funny. hungry. Well, we're all. Uh, oh, that was fine, what, too. Oh, you talk, look, <coughs> we had I, I did about a hundred. I did yeah. about a hundred of them, and they were gone and literally gone oh, yeah. in three minutes. What cracks me up about all of us is once we get on something, we, don't we get can't off. get off. Can't get off of it. And then we'll use every protein and do the same thing. With yeah, that's right. Like right now, I'm on that stuff called the W sauce. That stuff is so good. What is the What's W it sauce? It's it's a Worcestershire sauce. That a Worcestershire. Boys made in Key West during COVID. It was their secret family recipe thing, but they were fishing guides and they didn't, they weren't making no money because, you know, COVID. Yeah. Or I can't even say that word. We'll get branded with, hey, for more information. <laughs> for more information, yeah, click no, here. <laughs> we're talking about a history lesson right now, <laughs> the C word. Anyway, so they said, we're going to bottle this stuff and sell it. Well, I've been fishing with them boys, so once they got it up and running, they sent me some, said, let me know what you think. I was like, hold on now. Bear and Burton's? Yeah. I was like, you you, you boys is on to something now. Oh, I need to give me some. That may be the, uh, I had a Guadalmanian that showed me how to make that stuff like oh, that. Oh, what? <laughs> and hey, a Guadalmanian. Oh, no, and look, I cooked a whole bunch of it, and it was fine. It's got 63 <laughs> ratings, all five stars, Martin. Uh -huh. I didn't do none of them. I'm not just, and they don't pay me a dime. I'm just telling you right now, if you want something that puts good flavor on you, on your stuff, that stuff right there, w fire. Okay, boy. Like, fire. you just, you marinate it in it for, and you ain't got to marinate long. You just pour a little bit over it, throw it in a bowl, swish it around, then oh, take yeah, it out, put no, it on the grill. See, I, but, I don't mind overnight. Well, you could do it overnight, but you're oh, going the longer right. it sits in there, the more it's going to taste like that. So if oh, you yeah. want to save the taste of it was beef fine. or whatever, uh, we need to. That's yeah. the fire. Yeah, it's good. Have oh, you yeah. tried the yeah. fire shire? Yeah, I got it too. It's hot. They mean fire. Hold on. Yeah, a little so, bit of it, a little bit of it go a long way. So what's the difference between it's that and uh, theirs is thicker. The theirs is like it's thick. So, like, when you put it as a marinade, it doesn't just, you know, you pour, you go get Lee and Perrins or whatever, oh, Heinz, whatever brand you want to use, pour it on something. It's like water, mm. almost. Theirs is, is just thicker, thicker, so it holds to the meat, yeah, I'm, and yeah, it's, get, it's good. They're I mean, smart. They got, like, buy three, get 350 So, that's and... cooking tips for me. That right. stuff right there is good. Well, the one I done with that guy, we had it in a big, I mean, giant, this was an army cauldron okay yeah huge okay and i bought just like four hundred dollars worth of meat and that whole thing was full Did you get it from that fifty thousand dollar bull no but anyway 25 <laughs> 25 20 you know <laughs> hey it turned Who's to it, say it Two. turned it kind of uh tan color yeah that will yellow, if you if you know this tan if you leave it in there that'll oh, turn it I tell you, that. you talking about oh yeah. Hey, look, I had $400 worth of meat, okay, ribs, steak, and, hey, there was nothing left. They got it it wasn't all, about huh? 12 people. <laughs> so I went down that closeout aisle at the meat oh, market. No, you got it all. was got, one day from going. You got them. pork, beef, chicken, threw it all oh, in no, one I big I threw it all in there, and, hey, cauldron. hey, look, and I went in there to get some more. Now, <laughs> Christine said, what are you talking about? It ain't, no, ain't none left. And I said, wait a minute, that's $400 worth of meat. I had like 12 rack of ribs like this big. You know, I said, surely we didn't, just 12 of us didn't eat all of that. She said, yeah, we did. Uh, I love it. I love it. I'm telling you, you no, no, fine. Nothing about that sounds good to me. Uh, oh, it was. Oh, it sounds okay. good to me if you was in the Army and you'd been oh, eating no, no, whatever no, no, they no, serve no. in your oh, drink. Or drinking whatever they've been drinking. Look, I cooked it all morning. <laughs> I, was, got up I cooked it all morning. No, no, serious. I got up all, it soaked overnight. Then I cooked it all day long, and we like 6 o'clock, we ate it. It's oh. been on the grill all day long. Yeah. Everything was just it burnt. Melt, <laughs> it, hey, no, it wasn't burnt. It was melting your mouth, Low and heat. it was Low fine. Heat. I'm talking about, I'm oh, not boy. interested. So no. I had a two briquette fire over there. Just, oh, hey. just, just. oh, no, hey, I had a grill full of charcoal. Well, hey, I, I wish I'm, somebody who was a part of that it, oh. would be listening well, they succumbed oh, they, to salmonella. Hey, they would so. say, hey, we <laughs> ate it all. Because they bought it. Salmonella. The guys in my squad bought it. It wasn't uh, 12 of us. Uh, they ate it all? They ate it all. I'm telling you. Oh. I just ordered me two bottles of that sauce. I looked in there, looked in there on the platter where all the ribs were, and it wasn't nothing but a pile of bones. Oh. That stuff's good, though. I'm uh, not. I, mean, I shouldn't be allowed in front of a computer. It just well, stuff starts you, showing up at my house. I'll two tell days you later. about. I'll tell you about good stuff I no, discover. I'm about to try that. Whether they, yeah. I, I got. It some may of, be the same kind. Of deal. I'll bring you a bottle. I got some to have. Okay. 
Johnny D just jumped the yeah, gun. I'd have brought you a couple it, of it, bottles. I, just, it that, was, that, like I saved 50 line. cents by getting one each. It's good. Though. I can't pass up a sale. No, it's it's good. I'll, I'll pass along any cooking stuff I come across that's good. i tell you another one I found is some little small batch cheese dip company well, called Arbo's. Arbo's? Buddy. You can't order you it. All, you can't order me it. All. About that, and I thought you it auto corrected to Arby's, and um, I I really doubted you. What is, what is like a queso or? Yeah, it's queso, but they make like five different kinds of it, and some's white, some's yeah. yellow. Oh. But the cool thing, it's like the only one you can eat cold or hot. Mm. Ooh, it's got that consi- consistency where you can take a chip and dip it in it cold, and it's still on your deal like a cheese dip, or you warm it up in the microwave Where's or whatever. This found, sir. It's a small batch grocery oh, store. I'm say, trying to get them into Brookshire hey, so I can it, go buy if it. If it's oh, good, you, hot or cold, then it's good. Oh, yeah. They, it's they're like, like a special trip. Yeah, they're, they're like I-40 through Tennessee. Oh, yeah. I like, got cause it's a Yeah, it's a it's a veteran-owned deal. The guy sent me a message on – he watched the podcast and uh, – Loved it. He said, I'd love to send you some cheese dips. So he sent me some little cups of Boy, cheese Boy, he, he speaks your love language. I said, well, <laughs> not mine. I, I like cheese dip. It's not one of my favorite things. But you want to get my wife something? A five-gallon bucket full of cheese dip. <laughs> you want to talk about love language? Forget the dozen roses, son. <laughs> A five gallon yeah, bucket. I, I'm talking about hey. she cloud up rain on a no, bucket hey, full of cheese don't dip. Give now. me a half a gallon. <laughs> no, I'm just five gallons, buddy. But when I discover that kind of stuff, I'm like, man. whoa, hey, whoa! Now available at Harvest Foods. What's that? Arbo's cheese dip. No, nah, ain't no way. Hey, Boy, ain't no you way. Got it up there. Is it Arbo's dip? Arbo's dip. Hey, cheese with a kick, boys. It's a cheese Wait, with a kick. Look. Here's what I'll tell you. Arkansas Road. If that's it's a, at Max Fresh Market. If that's available, go get it. I'm going after this. <laughs> going, I'm going <laughs> right after this yeah. to that Max Fresh Market. Which one is that? Max that's Fresh the one. Market. Both of them. Got it. Arkansas, Arkansas Road. Road but that Max one's Bar closer Road. to the Honey Hole, and yeah. I'm going to buy some chips, and I know what I'm doing for lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm just telling you right now, go get it. Thank me later. I prefer the hot one. It's called, like, spicy, and it's yellow, which is kind of weird for cheese dip, but Brittany's on that white. You know, the white <laughs> cheese dip, whatever it is. The the standard looking cheese dip, but that spicy yellow one. I love it. My I kids love, love oh, cheese dip. Oh, yeah. They I'm more of it. a salsa man. Oh, I think I still got some mild out there if you want to take to your kid. Mm-hmm. They may be more, but it's yellow. No, nah, they're uh, white. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. She, they, they, body they, calls it all milk. Been, they've all been brainwashed into thinking cheese dip got to be white. Uh, yellow cheese good, too, now. All right. cheeses. I oh, yeah. ran across many cheeses that I'd turn my nose well, up. Well, here's what I'll say, and our, our fans are great, because if it weren't for our fans, I'd have never discovered Dot's Pretzels. So there are people out there that'll tell you about good stuff. And ever oh, since good. then, I don't know how much money I've spent on so, Dot's Pretzels, but I know they seven dollars a bag. We got a free I bag. I say, them things are higher than the cat's back. But they but good. Look, but look, my sister-in-law made some pork chops with yeah. Dot's Pretzel batter oh you can buy that crumble, crumble at, you can buy the crumble at hobby crumble lobby up. that hey, you can put on like batter stuff let me tell you something he steal my heart was it good oh, oh was it good <laughs> <laughs> was it good i'm now i'm gonna take it to the next level i'm gonna dip me some of them some of them crappies Uh-oh. fillets Man, down crap, in there boys I'm on a path and, back and, to and see what that like little mustard little mustard then then dredge them in that in that Dot's pretzel batter. All right, what are you going to do? Yeah. You gonna um, do this? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a way to end, for me to end up. If you fry something in Dot's pretzel, oh, I'm in oh, trouble. Your boy's oh, in. Mega yeah. trouble. I'm mm-hmm. coming with you. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm probably, I got to go work out after I'm, this. I'm now. probably going to have to go get that wheelchair so I have when he hurt his foot up here. You, I'm, you can be rolling me around <laughs> places yeah, if, that, if that becomes <sighs> a thing. Golly. Fried pork chops and Dot's pretzel batter. I've yeah. never heard of anything better. I think we can end the podcast right now and just tell everybody go out there and be somebody. Hey, go, that, go get you something. I'm trying to think of a way in that where I'm not just a full blown glutton and sinful, but buddy, no, I could I could skull drag that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm with you. You wouldn't yeah. see nothing but that little T bone that's in them thin cut breakfast pork chops mm, you fry. Ooh, Law. Mm, I, mm. I eat that sucker like a chicken wing. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, hey, running in one side and yeah, put the just, bones, spit the yeah. bone out the other side. Here you go. Here's that little tea right there. <laughs> right, here's the here's tea what bone, you need. Boys. All right, of it is gone. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm making me hungry. I can't I'm drink. starving. Here's what I'll tell you. 
we got some new stuff in the other day. And, and pro tip for all of you that may have a pregnant wife, y'all have already been through this. Amen. Mm. I we got her some my slippers for them feet that tend my to swell slippers. after a little bit of a day, and she can just go slide her feet into the my slippers. And she's cozy and she's happy. That's important during this process. Oh, I've yeah. come to find out. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because if mom ain't happening, no. ain't nobody gonna be happy. Boy. And not to mention, we're sleeping better with the pillows, the sheets, the towels. Everything. I like going. the towels. Yeah. I got a lot to dry off, and so every once in a while I don't get fully dry. These towels work, son. I'm dry now. I'll it have, I'll have to admit. It's nothing worse than a thin towel. I have to admit, those are the best drying towels yeah. I've ever used. They, they're, they're fluffy. They're great. And especially for this water down here, we don't have oh. that water. This water down here, when you get out the shower, it sticks to it. It's that's thick. Right. Yeah. Solid yeah. You can get yeah. you a lather here. Yeah. It ain't and this awful. is the only place in the United States where the water's like that. Yeah, that's because we're at the bottom of the hill. Uh-oh. We we get everybody it weirds else's. Me. Every hotel I've ever stayed in, I've, I'm weirded out. The water just disappears. Yeah, when you get out, you're yeah. dry. You're like... What happened? What happened here? It takes twenty minutes, and and uh, if you get towels from somewhere else, it takes you three of them. Yeah. yeah. You know how many hotel towels I go through? A hundred. You know how many my towels I go through? One. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the deal. And look, you can get it at my store. My store's goal is to support USA entrepreneurs and bring manufacturing back to our country. MyStore.com was created to give those entrepreneurs a voice and a platform to bring you their amazing products made right here. In the USA, they sell all the my pillow products you know and love, plus tons more. And they have patriotic T-shirts, and they are actually made in the USA. And those are not easy to find. Look, you need my pillows, my pillow sheets, my pillow towels, roll and go my pillows, and my slippers. The my store is the place to get it. You've got to check out these products and lots more at my store. Just go to mystore.com and use promo code DUCK for a special buy one, get one offer on pillows, sheets, towels, and slippers. Or you can call 800-881-0056 and use promo code DUCK. That's mystore.com, promo code DUCK, or call 800-881-0056 and use promo code DUCK. Well, you see those little packets that trade lemon? Mm-hmm. So me and Si went down to the to Venice, the marsh, the marsh. and uh, catching big, pretty speckled right. trout. Fat ones, I'm talking about. And I spent when we left, I spent about twelve minutes, twelve to fifteen minutes picking up true lemon packets all over Josh's camp. Oh, you did not. They were lemon. strolled out from here, from to to fro. Sounds like a Robertson to me. Yeah. When the I boy the gets on again. something. <laughs> when I tear it up, I empty it in there, and then I stick it in there and twist it. Okay, so hey. And yeah, then. The trash can. No trash can. Oh, yeah. There's trash can. <laughs> I threw it in the trash can. <laughs> trash can. <laughs> you can never uh, accuse Cy Robertson of it doing anything halfway. That's Lemon right. packets, he's in. That's right. Hey. Three, three Winston's, in. he was in. That's right. <laughs> Three every time I, I refill. Unsweet tea. Unsweet tea. Unsweet in. in. With three lemon packets every time I fill up, boys. He knows what he likes. He drank 27 gallons of Mr. and Mrs. T's, and then he got off that bag. <laughs> That's right. Well, hey, I still got a bunch of them, but I do love it. Yeah. That's oh, I know stuff. you love it, but that's you quit. Stuff. You quit drinking it morning, noon, and night. Now, right, now it's I'm a special saying, occasion. Well, hey, that's the only thing that got me through COVID. <laughs> Mater juice, boys. Yeah, Mater juice. That's the only Mr. thing he tea, would. Mr. Would and Mrs. T's consume. Spicy tomato juice. <laughs> it is pretty tasty. Oh no, it's good stuff. I didn't right. enjoy it. Got a kick to it. It's got a kick to it. <laughs> that's probably the only thing he could taste. When yeah. He had that. Well, hey, I had a moment. Again, man, the Almighty. How important are flowers? Very. Yeah. Hey, Google it if you do not know the answer to that, and you will be shocked of how much and how important a single little flower is. Hmm. How? Oh, I. Because yeah. I will tell you, your uh, vegetables and your fruits. And everything else, okay, Starts would not be in existence without a flower. Yeah. So, hey, I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. When did you have this epiphany? Oh, I had it this weekend because I asked my wife, said, hey, Google, 
importance of flowers. <laughs> and hey, she Googled it and I said, wow. Okay. Oh, I love this it. is impressive. Okay. Uh. That I actually asked the question. That's what was impressive about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know. What's even more important than them, or not more, but as, is the little yeah. bugs that That's right. the make bees the flowers and the birds go around. And the insects. Yeah, to pollinate. Life is a lot more simple than us humans make it complex and complicated. Okay, but it's really simple. Did you pick Miss Christine some flowers? Uh, hey, I send her to them all the time. That's good. And yeah. With my love. <laughs> <laughs> she's mean, but she's she's sweet. She's mean, but she's sweet. Yeah, she's mean, <laughs> and I couldn't live without her. Uh, oh man! You gonna pick up some flowers on your way home? No, I made my order some when we in uh, Arkansas. There you go. Uh, order them. Order them. I'm gonna stop and pick some. There's wildflowers blooming oh, I everywhere. Know. The, I don't know. That's that's this time of year is fun to watch. Yeah, them black eyed Susans was driving in, everywhere. When I was driving in, there were all kinds of flowers in the trees. Yeah, tree limbs. I just good. Look at this. <laughs> it's like that. Yo, I'm serious. It's I like that old saying, April showers brings May flowers. Oh, it's no. true, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I just I kept looking. I said, there's another bunch. There's another. Just, just, just all the way in. Everywhere you look, there's flowers in the trees. Yeah. And then if you look close, there's birds and bees and all kinds of insects doing their thing. That's a glimpse into size head. Oh, oh no, no. Hey, I love Actually, it. I love it. the birds and the bees and the flowers. That's right. I mean, yeah. that, I that that's it. what's inside of it. That's, it. that's right. <laughs> like that whole. It's like right. Cinderella you every morning when he wakes my, up. My cranium. <laughs> it's all kind of good looking stuff that's going to come out. Yep. Butterflies, <laughs> rainbows. And that is stuff. why. Unicorns. You're America's favorite uncle, right? There. Well, no, I'm just telling you. Right there. Life is great, okay? Yo, but then on the other sides, you got the bad side, okay? Yeah. Yeah, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Yeah, our thoughts and prayers are with everybody in Uvalde, Texas, mm -hmm. after that moronic outburst. Yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. The coward. Um, coward. Oh. Call him what you will. Just don't mention his name. Don't make him, right. don't make him nothing. Don't make him something he's not. Um, and the same with the families in Buffalo. Um, yep. that are reeling from that deal, too. It's just. And I will say this. They keep screaming, we got to get rid of the guns. Folks, the guns ain't the problem. We've got mental illness out in our nation, in the world, for crying out loud. Yeah. Let's address the real problem for yeah. once. I agree. I agree with that sentiment. Yeah. I, I also wonder. In the world that we live in, if we saw another animal going through this kind of change mentally, and they were changing their behaviors and changing this, we would spend billions of dollars studying to it, fix it, studying it, yeah. trying to figure out yeah. what was wrong. Yeah. Why are we not doing the same thing with humans? Hmm. Why does that not exist? Yeah. Stop, Why? Yeah. Stop addressing the wrong problem. And let's get with the real issue here. Yeah. What is the real problem here? Okay. So if they did a study, I would, if I'm not a bet man, but I would bet that it would come right back to this. I would agree. That's part of the problem. The, I, the cell phone? The access. The internet. Yeah. The internet. Yeah, the, yeah, inter right. the access to the internet, not the phone yeah. itself, but the 24-7 at your fingertips access well to... that's proven by if we look back through history yeah okay that's proven and another thing and we talked about this earlier what did phil used to say he still says it a <laughs> lot by the way well hey they it, take it, out prayer yeah they take out the ten commandments, the ten commandments. Well, if you take out the good stuff from our schools from our government from our daily walks of life guess what's going to happen the bad stuff is going to move in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just common sense, guys. Yeah. Phil used to always say, you know where you end up? The courthouse. You know what's at the courthouse? Yeah. The Ten Commandments. The, Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. the Bible. Yeah, when you break he one said, of well, the you, laws. Well, you put your hand on before you got to say something, the Bible. He says, so you end up, you could have been taught this, or you end up going to a place where you figure it out. 
And he said, it seems to me you'd, you'd want to start here but so you didn't end up there. You know, that's well, that I've common always, sense. I've preaching. always said it, okay? We've got all this history, okay? And we're going back into it and, and destroying, like, the monuments that was done for – it's our history for crying out loud. Now, what are we doing? We're tearing them down all over our nation. Yeah. It's a reminder, good, bad, or indifferent, yeah, of where I, we come from. It is part of our nation's history, for crying out loud. Quit being an idiot and leave it alone. Yeah. Learn from it and do better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that, and this is coming from an idiot. So, hey, good <laughs> grief. Well, it, that statue hurt somebody's feelings one day. Well, and I think that's... that's well, well, that's another thing that we need to address. Okay? <laughs> Get it. Yeah. No, no, Go, sir. What happened to we the people... No. Not an individual. Yeah. One individual says, oh, that hurts my feelings. Well, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, I th- hey, and, and let's go with, hey, uh, we the people. That's what our Constitution starts out with, for crying out loud. And speaking of that, Memorial Day is coming up. I <laughs> want to thank everybody that has served our nation, our first responders, our police officers, our mili- men and women in the military. Absolutely. Thank you very much for standing up and dying for our nation, for crying out loud. And I think that, that's the point I wanted. The, those men that did that were raised to be men and women, were raised yeah. to be men and women. But I that's just, my you know, issue with this. Hey, enough is enough. I'm with, I'm with you. you. Okay. I'm following uh, you. We're, we're, we've been uh, just, what is the, the saying? If good men don't do nothing, yeah. Then you you deserve what oh, you get. The only thing, yeah, that's the old quote: is the only thing necessary for evil to grow is for good men to stand by and do nothing. That's right. Which is what the the all these dude grocery stores, schools, all these little whatever they are. Yeah, they're not being raised to be. And when I say men, I'm not talking these manly. I'm talking a man who loves his neighbor. Yeah, a man who loves people. And a, that's a real man. Yeah. And w- we got off of that somewhere. And now there's 18 year old dudes who I don't know what they were raised to do, but it we're missing something in America. And I think I think we talk about it taking out of schools. We t- it starts at home. And who are we who are we raising our children to be? There and you, you talk about Memorial Day, and we talk about you and Stone, who served. And thank you for that. But y'all were raised in a different way. I was raised in a different way. Martin was raised in a different way. And we're, something is missing in these kids' childhood. Shocker. I bet it's Jesus. Yeah. Um, to where they, they grow up with a light about them and how to actually be a true man, a true human. And, and this is what we end up with. Well, yeah, I, we I need like to it. get rid of, okay, all the bad stuff. Well, look, before we go down that road, Y'all know we dodge these topics if you're listening yeah. to us. We stay away from this because we want to put a positive spin on things. I think today we're going to delve into these topics just because we need to. Well, and it needs to be remembered. That's exactly right. I think, personally, one of the problems with all this is the breakdown of the family dynamic. Yeah. Yep. I think that has a major factor in all of this. Now, when I'm saying that, some people get married, do something stupid, and divorce is the only option, right? But I see it in, in my friends that have gone through that. When their parents were committed to working together for the betterment of that kid, even if a divorce was involved, guess what? Everything turned out better because the the end game was to raise this child right. But when you have people going out there, they and and guys, I'm talking about you here. You get a woman pregnant and then you bail. Yeah. That that's not okay. Cuz you were part of that. Yeah. It took you to do that. Yeah. Stay two. in that kid's life. It takes two. It mm-hmm. takes two. Yep. If you're not ready to make that commitment, in the words of Phil Robertson, keep that sucker in your pocket. Keep that thing in Keep your pocket. Keep it in your pocket. If you're not ready for that commitment, don't pull that thing out. That's just where we're at. But the world that we live in and the breakdown of that at home is where all of this starts. Mm-hmm. And 
when I was growing up, Stone growing up, Cy, John David, if you had a problem with each other, somebody generally ended up getting hit in the mouth. Yeah. That's just what happened. You can call it violence. You can call it whatever you want to. It was a way to settle a dispute. And, and you know what that. happened nine times out of ten? You got up and you shook each other's hand. Whoever got their butt whooped and whoever won, you looked at each other man to man. You got up, dusted each other off. You shook their hand and said, we're good. And most of the time, you become best friends. A lot you of times. a little altercation. And you know what you had for the other one? Either mm-hmm. way, if you were the winner or the loser, because I've been on both sides of it, yeah. you had respect for that person yeah. standing across from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those days are out. Yeah, because you had pushed him. You had pushed him to a point that, hey, he had had enough of it. Yeah. Okay. You well, back a dog into a corner, yeah, yeah. you're going to fight. Hey, you rattle his cage, the big dog going to bite you. Yeah, those were the days where yeah. there, there were always consequences for, for your, your actions. For your actions. Yes, sir. Which, and now uh, we try to legislate yeah. that crap. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you look, can't legislate that crap. No. That's just what it is. Well, and you can't even get mad at your friend. Like, let me, yeah. my best friend's name is Drew. Yeah. Me and Drew got in a fight on a golf course one time. It just it, we were in junior high and we threw down on a golf course. So your your brother in law is your best friend. No, no, Drew. My, oh, I was fixing to say Drew. My brother in law is good. Me and him haven't gotten fisticuffs because we didn't grow up. Well, and you're Drew, you're but, grown now. Yeah, you know how to handle that. Me and Drew, way. And, and you know what? We were better for it. But like nowadays, it's like oh, he made me mad. I'm not his friend anymore. Bye. I'm yeah. like, what? Huh? Yeah. Handle it. You're canceled. Yeah. yeah it's this with. whole idea of. If somebody hurt your feelings or if somebody did something wrong to you, you just x them from your life. No, you have grown up man-to-man but, conversations. And that's part of what you're talking like we've we've lost the whole well family the, dynamic the, the of family unit. Yeah. Okay, the family unit and it consists of a dad, the head of the household, a mom, the homemaker of the household. Yeah. And then the kids. That's the way it was meant to be. Yeah. Okay. A man married to a woman. Okay. That's the only way you're going to have kids, male and female, get together. Science. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, that don't it's work. backed up by science. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Science but, I mean, only works what, when it's to their benefit. That's what we're missing. <laughs> okay. And look, the evil one ain't stupid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if he breaks down the family, and yeah. that's what's been happening in America and the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's he's breaking the family unit apart. And it's easy today, too, to let screen time parent your kids. Right? Because well, both mm-hmm. parents, in most cases, are working. Because to make it in today's world, you have to have two incomes. Oh, yeah. Because of inflation and everything else that has gone on. You have to have two incomes to survive. So when you both get home, you... You're tired. So you're tired. You're wore out. Yeah. So it's easy living. to hand them an iPad and say, entertain yourself. The fantasy world. So that's not a problem when they're two or three. You can control because you go on there and hit play. It's like, oh, okay, you're watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Cool. No problem. When that gets to seven or eight and they learn basic spelling mm-hmm. and can search for whatever the crap they want to on there, because mm-hmm. no matter what kind of controls you're in, kids are smart. Mm-hmm. They figure it out. God, that's why I'm smart. <laughs> that's why we're a resilient bunch because as a kid, I didn't have none of that. I had to entertain myself. But you know what I did? I figured it out. And the kids, that's no different with a tablet or with a screwdriver. It doesn't matter. You figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Like you sit there and yeah. tinker with it till you figure it out. And that is one of the problems when you're not sitting there controlling what that is, whether that is Screen time, but if we could get to a world where the mom doesn't have to work, mm-hmm. or if she's the breadwinner, hey, there's very brilliant females that get paid a lot of money, or the dad doesn't have to work, where you can pour your time, effort, and soul into those children instead of depending on technology to babysit them, mm-hmm. then you start making headway into what we're doing here. And, and, and you get back to, if there is a problem, these kids know they can communicate it. Right now, they, I mean, one of the problems that I, I look at it now, who does a kid go tell if they're having a problem at school? Like, and how do you do it without then other kids picking on? Yeah. Or where is the safe spot for these kids to say, look, I'm not in a good spot? 
Like, what? why do we not have those avenues built in? And you say we do, but you don't, because when they're at school, they have a schedule that they have to maintain. So they're either going to have to show up early or stay late to address their problem with somebody. Well, they're not going to do that, because by that time, you're ready to go home, right? Yep. And the parents generally rush in to get them there anyway on time. So, like, why do we not have a built-in time there for these kids to discuss these problems? It's a it's a weird deal. Um, but until we address that, and none of this is going to change, I don't think. It doesn't matter yeah. the weapon. It doesn't matter the argument is there, well, 18, 19 died. You know, if we didn't have that, maybe they would have stopped at one. Well, one's too dead gum many. Yeah, one is too many. One is yeah. too many. Yeah. One and 19, both of them too many. And it doesn't matter what it is because that one is as valuable as those 19 are. So how do we get that out? And, and, and I don't know that answer, but I know it ain't legislation. I know it's got to be a communication issue somewhere where these kids can get help if they're feeling that way. That's right. And, and people do not use those devices for babysitters because obviously there are a lot of evil Mm-hmm. humans on this planet well you got you and got they're the out there trying fingertip. to take advantage they're hunt- of your kids they're hunt- they're, they're hunting yeah they're preying on them so yeah. keep a close eye on that use all the apps you you can get to to filter all that trash but uh be very protective over your children absolutely no i mean i it just but that to me is where john david was right that is where it has to start mm-hmm. and it can't it, it's got to start in those four walls yep. where you spend 90% of your time. And size. And look, I got nothing but the utmost respect for single parents oh, that yeah. are out there yep. killing it, yep. raising their kids, honoring their responsibility, doing what's right. I hate that they're single parents. I do. But the ones that step up, strap their shoes on every day and say, I'm about to provide a life for my kids, my hat's off to you. Because I ain't even a parent yet, but I'm sitting here watching my wife try to raise two of them inside her belly. And it's unbelievable. And I can't believe there are people out there raising humans right by themselves. Like, that that's incredible. So my hat's off to you. And I know you're doing your best. And that's where we as a society have to step up and help those kind of people do even better. They're doing their best, but how can we pour into them? And until we can do that kind of stuff on more than Wednesdays, and Sundays, we're in we're in a bind. This is a generational problem. Oh yeah, this is not a legislational problem. This is a generational problem. It is trending. It is in the wrong direction. But we'll take another break. We'll be back. All right, Derek from Sparta, Michigan. Sparta, Michigan. Sparta. Uh, I go to church regularly on Sunday and was wondering if you guys have any advice to make church seem fun for my four-year-old because he never wants to stay in class and he wants to sit with us, but we feel like the Sunday school classes are more for his age than the message. How do we get our four-year-old to stay in Sunday school? Mm. He's four. You walk in there, (laughs) drop him, and you walk out. (laughs) And say, stay. (laughs) <laughs> and you close it. No, that 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 actually, I I laughed when I read it because I've been there. Uh, my daughter will cling to your leg, and she don't want to stay. She don't like humans. She don't like stone. She's looking at everybody sideways. What are you talking about? I like humans. Yeah, three of them. <laughs> <laughs> all, <laughs> all of their last all names are Stone. All, all three of them. Uh, but you know, she don't. She don't. She's a shy kid. She, you're not shy, but she's like, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I want to be here with all these people that I don't know. And so, strangers. I go in there. I know. I've talked to the teacher. I know him well. I'm like, here you go. Good luck. And there's a moment. Yep. And by the time you get back, they're having a good time. And so my advice is, force it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially since it's a four year old. But there's worse things than him coming out and sitting and hearing a message with well, you. Doing a little praise and worship, all that kind of good stuff with you. And so there's there's worse th- at least they're at church. That's a good point. My hat's off to you for that commitment. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh keep doing what you're doing and I bet one day it'll stick where then you're yeah. probably they're gonna halfway through before Sunday school starts, take off walking towards that hall. Yeah, so, they're, they're going to be ready. Right. Where'd they go? So, 
And Carter used to be like that. Now, but like I'm worried Carter's gonna get hit in the parking lot because he's running trying to get to class. I'm like, hey, bro, slow. Down. You're gonna get there. Yeah, it'll get there. Um, just keep, just stay with a commitment. Yeah, is the biggest. You're thing. doing the right thing, Derek. That's the most important part. All right, now Seth, Seth from Alabama. Seth's got a tough. T- Seth, Seth's going through it, boys. His girlfriend of two and a half years, who I saw myself marrying, doesn't want to be with me right now. We've had a few issues recently. She's going through a lot. She doesn't want to hear from me or anything. She still loves me, and I still love her, but she wants this time apart. I don't know if we'll get back together or not, but I hope we can after some time. I'm trying to stay in prayer and the word, but I'm still struggling. I'm struggling on how to leave her leave her be during this time because I'm afraid she's just going to move on completely. Any advice on how to get through this is welcome. Oh, I've been out of the game for a long time. Yeah, (laughs) My experience, though, was when they wanted, if they 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 want the break, give them the break. And if they move on, you wasn't going to keep them anyway. Mm. And if you keep trudging after, you're going to move her faster than if than if you let the process play out. Yep. Give her the space. And I'm not sure if you know this, my friend. There's a bunch of them out there. <laughs> a bunch. He's been with her for two and a half years. Well, yeah. So it's it hurt. hurts. Two and a half years is fine. Yeah. This hurts. This, there's, it, no I, it, there's no yeah. doubt that it hurts. But she needs to see your respect right now for her wishes if this thing is. Because you're going to have to respect her going forward the rest of your life if this thing works out. Mm-hmm. So, like. She needs to know right now that you'll honor that respect. So honor, if she wants a break, it's a, get, go get you a fishing rod. Yeah. And you, hey. Think how much money you'll save, son. <laughs> you buying dinner for one now, not two. Like, just get you a fishing rod. Go fishing. Get you a kayak. Go go do something else. Get you a kayak. Like, go somewhere where there ain't no cell phone service. That way you ain't got to worry about what, you know, and just don't, yeah. don't obsess over it. You got to give her some hand. space. Um, been through this. We weren't dating two and a half years, but a girl named Allison once dumped me. There you go. And I, she was like, I, I'm out. I need some space. And I was like, no, we were supposed to get married, right? And I was like, no. Nope. We ended up, li- we, we dated other people, like, after we broke up. And then one night, we ended up back at, in, like, the same group of people. And I looked at her and said, we need to talk. All right, like, is this what you want or you want to try this out again? And now we're married, 10 years. So there is hope. But I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, when she dumped me, I went. I was like, nope, we're, we're going to talk about this as many times as I can. And I was like, no, 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 we, we got to fix it. What do we got to do here? Yeah. And she was like, nope, need some space. Yeah. So I had no choice but to say, all right, see you later. And like, we didn't talk for a few months. Yeah. But I, giving her that space made her realize that I was really cool and she really needed me in her life. No, no. But, <laughs> but she Seth, really missed pizza. That, <laughs> amen to that. But Seth, that might be what she needs. You know, she needs some time apart, and she might realize, oh wow, Seth was a great guy. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I saw it happen to a buddy of mine. Um, everybody just always assumed. I mean, they were together longer than two and a half years. Everybody assumed they would be married, and then all of a sudden, she was like, "No, I'm out of here." And now they're married with three kids, yeah. but. You know what? Every once in a while that gotta... happened, and me and him went fishing, and we we got away from that situation, got distracted from it, and now they're been married for ten years, three kids, and everything is fantastic. So. Yeah, every once in a while, a, a relationship at that stage, yeah. it's not married, it's just dating. Need you might need to both step back and ca- think about count it. your inventory, see what you got going, pray about it, and. and the yeah. Lord, if you're pray, you say you're praying about it. What's best for you is probably going to happen. It might, you might not think that. You're like, what, what is going on here? But the Lord could bring you back together. The Lord could introduce you to somebody you don't even know because there's six billion people on this planet that is way better for you, yeah. and life will be way better. And I got news for you. When you get married, guess what? She gonna want some breaks every now and then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She gonna say, "Don't you need to go somewhere?" Yeah. <laughs> You're going to say, you know what I think I do? Yeah. Yep. Time to go. Yeah. There's going to be times where you she's doing her thing. Alone time, boys. Alone time. <laughs> Allison loves alone time. <laughs> yeah. She likes reading books. And, like, I'll get in bed. I'll be like, hey, you want to watch TV? She's like, nope. I just want to read my book. And I'm like, uh, what, what do you want me to do? She's like, 
Whatever you want to do, yeah, but yeah. don't turn the TV on. I'm like, hey, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> headphones in, do do whatever you go to sleep. I don't care. Go just let me be. Yep. No, but yeah, just respect. You got to respect her wishes, man. That Giving her that respect will probably do more for you than you realize So yep. in this situation. but All right, Martin, you want, I got a little long one to send us out of here. You ready for it? Rock and roll, bro. All right, so I've said this before, I think. If I haven't said this before, hear it now. I used to look at the Bible as a rule book, but it is a playbook on how to have the most fulfilling life you can. And we talked about how the house of like the family unit of America is just kind of in shambles. And there's some verses in Ephesians, and they are labeled instructions for Christian households. If we can follow these instructions, I promise you, life will be way better than you could ever imagine. And I figured that, I didn't figure that out at a young age. I didn't figure that out when I first got married. It took some time. And when me and my wife figured this part out, life has been way better. Um, so Ephesians 5, 21 through 33, submit uh, instructions for Christian households. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to yourselves to your Submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves his, himself, and the wife must respect her husband. If you want to fix the problems in America today, it starts at home. And that is how we're supposed to live our lives at home as one unit. And men, we got to step up. We got to raise our sons to do better. We got to lead our wives. It's, it's, it, it's biblical. Ephesians 5. Go read it for yourself if you don't believe me. It is on the men of this country to raise up other men and other women to be better. And I think we can all agree right now it's time to do better. Absolutely. Yep. That's all I got. What you got, sir? Well, five Galatians five twenty three talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's what you need to do. Start putting that in your life. You know, kindness, love, peace, joy, goodness, brotherly love, all the all the good things. Whatever you've got, like selfishness, throw that out <clears throat> and bring in self. <clears throat> excuse me, self control. Okay, it's also <clears throat> from the fruit of the Spirit. But hey, put the good stuff in your life, okay? Love it. We love y'all. We love America. And everything is going to be just fine. That's it. That's what I'm here to tell right. you. Put we'll, Jesus first. You're in good shape. We'll see y'all next time. We're out. <laughs>